right, Buzz, what's the secret of uh, getting your teams to be playing so well toward the end of the year? You know, the last time we all went to Nashville before the tournament. World uh, ended. Yeah, uh, nobody wanted to play y'all. Y'all were searching. Last year, of course, we know what happened. This year again. So, uh, what is? how is it that, that you're able to get your teams playing so well toward the end of the year? I don't answer with any uh, arrogance. I, I think we lose a game before Christmas that we shouldn't every year. And I think my career reflects that. And I think that we win two games after Valentine's Day that we shouldn't. And my assistants would tell you, uh, the ones that have been with me the longest, the reason we lose is because of how we spend the month of September and the first two weeks of October. And I would say that that's why we lose uh, before Christmas, but I also think that that's why we win after Valentine's Day. I think we utilize, um, we always start work the day after Labor Day, and for the most part, until the second weekend in October, we do 5% uh, things related to basketball. And it's all related to what we want to be about, uh, the type of teammate, um, the level and pace and intensity of work, the intangibles. And I've tried, uh, even since we've been here, I've tried to do better. Um, the pandemic year, I never said it when it was going on. The reason we weren't any good is because we couldn't do all of those things those first six weeks. And so the relationships weren't the same on the floor, off the floor. I'm not saying that that's right, but uh, that is what I believe to be the truth to your question. We talked to some of the guys yesterday. They said that it was around that Christmas time that Anderson kind of came out of his shell and that maybe that correlated to um, the, the, the turnaround he had on the court too. Is that something that you saw? And um, what was that kind of transformation like from your perspective off the court? Yeah, to add to the my response to Olin, I think the one category – in this is now there's more new players than ever before on your team. And stereotypically speaking, a high percentage of them have been coached somewhere else at this level. And so when you spend the first six weeks doing what we do the first six weeks, and you probably left the last place with some sort of disgruntled knit. That's even longer to process because you left a place that you may or may not have liked and you walked into a tornado that you have never even dreamed of. And so I just think that it's delayed. I do think that, um, I don't know if I would say Christmas. I, I think we were all so humbled at Christmas and so embarrassed that we were all willing to change and we were all receptive to how can we be better? I, I think Andy's been phenomenal over the last three and a half, four weeks to the point that many of those games we wouldn't have won. I think solo has been the most mature freshman I've coached in February other than the I also think that Julius, um, has had that same turn in regards to he accepts how we operate. He now likes how we operate. He now believes in how we operate. And I think all of that takes place. Dexter is an outlier, and that's why he's been so good for us, because he's so mature. He, he's he's a man. And so there's not any um, immaturity in anything that he does. But I think that Andy, Solo, Jew, those guys have just continued to grow and gain traction. And I think that that's, if what I'm saying is true, 
that's why if four boots and Henry one or all don't play well before Christmas, the opponent really doesn't matter because we have so many unknowns. We know they're talented. They're unknown relative to how we go. And so when those known guys don't produce while we're waiting on Andy to come out of a shell, Jew to accept what's going on, Solo to realize what this level is about, well, then who do you turn to? And I think that that's why, you know, if you if you look at our numbers um, in conference and the caliber of the opponent, and you look at the numbers in non-conference and the caliber of the opponent, it's like, what happened? And I don't think that you can just ascertain, here's one thing, Andy came out of a shell. Yeah, he did. But it's a litany of things like, wow. And so I would say it would be more in early January where those guys were like, oh. And, you know, when you start playing at Florida and then you play your first home conference game, now you start realizing the magnitude coupled with, and by the way, guys, uh, we can't lose because of what we've already done. It's just you're you're fighting from a negative margin. Like when we were when we were uh going through two day yesterday, even though it's not two day, given context on the four games that we've played against the next opponent. Whether it's Kim Palm, whether it's HDI, whether it's the net, all of it's the line. Nobody will say that, but it's all predictive. It's all just based on the line. And that's how the line is formed. And nobody will say that. But, like, if you see, like, where we were the very first time we played at Auburn, and then you watch, well, what happened when we played at Arkansas? And then you just start scrolling, like, well, what did they think we were going to do? Oh, you're going to go 9-9. Nine and nine. <laughs> Oh, you're going to go 10-8. and eight. Oh, you're going to go 12-6. and six. Oh, you're going to go 13 and five. And like you watch like what transpired. There's no way that it's a person or a play or a motivational speech. It's just the compound effect of so many things. To to that end, when you talk to about the guys you have, you, you, you I know you like their stories. Is, is Andy a good indicator of a guy? That yeah, and he, and he, and he's, um, I think partly it's because of my idiosyncrasies. I think it's partly the first six weeks when you don't know how to take me, particularly if I haven't known you. And I think that that's something I have to figure out even in the next couple of months is <clears throat> how how can in the recruiting of a portal, which takes uh, 14 days, 21 days. That's such a different beginning to a relationship than I went and saw for my second day of employment here. And we zoomed and talked and text with mom and dad and kid and coach and AAU coach for 18 months before he ever got here. The same with Mo, right? They're in the same class. Like I know mom, Mo's mom, Mo's dad, Mo's mentor, like they're with us before they even get here. But when you're doing a Zoom, fly to do a home visit, well, it ain't a home visit. The kid's on somebody else's campus. Hey, uh, do I need to go see your mom? Yeah, where does she live? Nine states away. Well, let me go see her on our lunch break. It's just, it's not wrong. It's just new. And so then you get here in the summer, and how we utilize our time in the summer is unlike any other program that I'm aware of. And then we start the day after Labor Day and it's like, hey, this is hell. Like, what what happened? And so when you don't have those relationships, it's just, it just takes time. And I love his story. And like, Andy came here because of his mentor, exclusively. But his mentor knows Rock and I, and has known us for 20 years. So he knows the process. 
but the actual kid, he he's never been through it. And like now, I think he's taken 17 charges. And if you told him to take 17 in a row, he would do it and never blink an eye. And everybody in the program believes that. But if you told him to take 17 charges September the 3rd at the Lincoln Center, they'd be like, Coach, he ain't going to make it. <laughs> like, he ain't going to make it out of the Lincoln Center, much less have the impact. It's just, yeah. And and he has two years left after this year. Like, whoo. So. What's the mindset going into the tournament? You've played Auburn and Arkansas, but how do you prepare not knowing who you're going to play even though you've seen them? Well, what I told the team is, well, half the time's wasted. Right. So we can talk about Arkansas and we can talk about Auburn and we can practice the things that we practice, but half of it's wasted. So uh, what we've tried to do over the last two days is spend 85 percent of our time talking and practicing ourselves uh, so that we can be better and give them glimpses of. Do you remember this? Let's practice this for a little bit. Do you remember that from the other team? Let's practice this. We won't know until Thursday night at nine who we're going to play and then play 18 hours later. So that's part of playing in a tournament. Um, that's part of earning a double buy. So I think the mindset's great. Our, our guys are excited. Um, they're thankful. They're together. Um, I don't know that there's a right way or a wrong way when you don't know who you're going to play. You know, a couple of times, uh, once, one, one time in, uh, in our career, we played the winner of the 11 seed game in Dayton. And that's even more strange. Like you're named on selection Sunday and you still don't know who you're going to play for three days or two days, depending upon which day you play. So um, I, I think we've utilized the time the right way. How do you, uh, in this type of, set of formats, uh, I guess use the in-person, you know, experience of what you can look at, what these teams are doing compared to, you know, what all the stuff on film breaks down. I guess just seeing how a guy's actually moving in person that week. Well, I love it just because I grew up in an era where it was legal to do that. So, like, when I started coaching, you could go scout. And going to scout was just as important as going to recruit. I'm not sure what year that changed, but now that's the only time you can do it. And Corey always makes fun of me as a head coach. Like, I'm the only head coach that goes to those games. Like, like I still want to go to the game, even though we're not playing. I just love ball. Um, but to me, and our staff knows this, you know, like, um, even with the portal, you know, you can watch so much synergy on kids now. And the eyes of my staff, uh, TJ is as good as I've ever seen. Uh, Devin, I've known for 13 years and trust unequivocally. Those guys can do work watching. And I'm like, hey, I, will you take me to see the kid? Can I go to the game? I feel better when I can, the body language, can I hear a call? What was the coach doing? How were they in timeouts? I'm much better in that regard. Um so our staff will go tomorrow, and then as soon as the game's over, we'll go back to the hotel and talk to our team about who we're playing for the first time. And with the double buy, how do you, you know, I know it would, I guess, have an advantage the deeper you go into the tournament, but for all the talk that some people have about it's tough to play a team that's already, you know, kind of shaking the rust off 24 hours before and you've got a week layoff. How do you maximize the advantages of a double buy and minimize whatever uh, challenge? Yeah, I do think there is an advantage in playing. Uh, you've already been on the floor. You've already had a rep of doing it. But I also think there's an advantage in not playing in that uh, you should be a little fresher, but it's probably going to take you a little bit more time to uh, get the tires going. I, th I think the, the way I would answer it is, is over an 18-game schedule, you get what you earn. We've played in the play-in game today before. Uh, we've played with a single bye, and now we're playing with a double bye. And at each location I've been, that's happened every everywhere we've been. And so there's different ways to look at it. 
Uh, different coaches, when they know they're going to the NCAA tournament, they won't say it, but they're more concerned about the NCAA tournament than they are their conference tournament for the same reasons you're talking. Um, we play at six, I believe, on Friday. If we win, we play again Saturday at two. Uh, so that's a that's a really fast turnaround. So if you're going to advance, yeah, I would like to have only one game under our, our belt if we're only going to have 18 hours off. Plus, you, you pronounce outlier differently now. I know. I messed up, didn't I? I caught right. myself. Yeah, I said Contra it wrong. Said, okay. I said it wrong. <laughs> no, this what hat is that? Uh, Harvey Little League. All-Stars. That's sweet. nice. People think it's Houston. Which yeah, it looks good. good. Harvey Little League. Appreciate it. Um, Dustin, speaking of baseball, nice lead in there. Uh, I know y'all are busy men. Have you had a chance to uh, catch up with Dusty? Yeah, he calls my son because I won't answer my phone. Uh, yeah, I, not yet. Um, talked to him after the World Series and all of that. Uh, but I tried not to. Uh, particularly once conference play starts, I rarely respond to text, occasionally look at my phone. Um, yeah. Hopefully we play for a while, but I can't wait to see Coach. I love him. And, and how neat was that to see while you're so busy at the beginning of the season to see what they did in the World Series? Yeah, and uh, when um, a few things on that, we played in the Sweet 16 in um, in Arizona – in what was our, I think it was the second Sweet 16, and Coach was coaching the Reds, and they were there for spring training. So he came and spent the day with us. Then uh, we were at Virginia Tech when the Astros played the Dodgers in the World Series, and Rock was on my staff at Virginia Tech. And I sent Rock, uh, got him front row seats to go watch the Astros win it uh, or play uh, against the Dodgers. And then I think I've been twice since we've been here, uh, since Coach has been here. It's – if you look at his playing career, I think he played six years in the Negro League. And you look at what he did in Major League, it's phenomenal. And six years, he was he was a pro, but not in that league. And then if you look at his coaching career, fairly certain that there were six years that he was unemployed. And I'm fairly certain he's top 10 and wins as a coach now. And there were six years that he didn't coach. Like, his career is like, I mean, he's had two Hall of Fame careers and 12 years not in the league for one reason or another. And he's like uh, Rock was saying when they were making their run this year, he's like, he ought to shut it down. You know, like know when to leave the carnival. You know, if you win, that I'm like, Rock, he, he ain't quitting. <laughs> like they're going to have to make him quit. He Coach is going to keep doing it just because that's, that's just who he is, who he is. Got time for a couple more. Coach, are you uh, you feel very confident that your guys uh, are going to approach the SEC tournament kind of the same way they did last year, even though you already have an NCAA tournament spot locked up? Yeah, I, may, I, I think the approach, Olin, will be the same. I, 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 similar to what we talked about uh, two times ago, I think one of the marks of great maturity is your response. And I think the response of our group in the three losses speaks for itself. But I think the response throughout the wins speaks of their maturity as well. Nine weeks in even the world you and I live in, nine weeks is a long time. Nine weeks of doing the same thing over and over and over day after day when you're 20 is an eternity. And I think the maturity our group has shown, some of it's to what I mentioned with Travis, but I wouldn't necessarily say that in the 18 games, 
when we showed up, anybody thought, yeah, Texas a and is going to win. They're the most talented team. I, I don't know how many times that would even have been said in the 18 games. And so the prerequisite of all of the work and the execution and the scouting reports and all of the things that the staff and the players did over nine weeks – as, as much maturity as they've shown, the one thing, and we've talked about it, um, we talked about it yesterday, uh, no, yeah, yesterday, and I mentioned it again today, like, it's just become our habit, which I think for their life is superb. I think it'll, it'll play well the rest of their life to be an everyday person, to be an everyday teammate, to be an everyday worker. I think they're excited because they want to win it. Uh, I think there's a little disappointment that we didn't win it. Uh, I think there's a little disappointment that Dexter Dennis was not on the all defensive team. I don't think it, it's not anything that I'm saying. That's just what they're saying to me. Um, and they had, we finished practice maybe 18 to 20 minutes shorter today. I just stopped it. Like they're just playing with phenomenal energy. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's enough to win, but, yeah, I do think that they'll attack it the same way. And and I also think that last year we attacked that the right way. And, you know, like uh, Luke Killen, because I don't look at social media much anymore, he, he showed me uh, one of the deals that CBS released on uh, what the tournament committee does going into Selection Sunday. And it was a lot of the same things that I've been made fun of in my diatribe this time last year. Like it's the, it's what we're all trying to do, right? It's what all coaches are trying to do. It's what all players want to do. It's what all support staff wants to do. And all of those families are sacrificing for that chance. Yeah. We just, we just want to know what, what, how do you do it? You know, like just be transparent. This is how it works. We're being judged by the net. And nobody knows how to calculate the net. Okay, well, that doesn't seem like if it's what we're all trying to do, everybody should know the directions on this is how you do it. We beat Ole Miss and move up the same number of spots in the net as when we beat Alabama. Okay, that's fine. We just want to know, like, how does that work? How do you do that? And if that's a portion of how you're being judged, why does it have to be secretive? But I think some of that happened several years ago, the more research I do. I think some of that happened when uh, the BCS uh, football was going on, That like it was a computer that did it, and then all of a sudden it turned into a committee that did it. Like whatever it is, what is the, how are you judged? Our guys knew what was at stake last year, but the disappointment was, Oh, so we, we played in four more quad one games and we won three of them and that wasn't enough. Hey, Buzz, your non-conference schedule's awful. Okay, I got you. I understand. Is that why though? Or is that just what Twitter's saying? Like, we just want to know, like, how is it judged? Is it Bart Torvik? Is he involved? Is Ken Palm involved? Is the line involved? What, what 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 is it? No matter what it is, everybody would like to know. Not buzz. Not because we were snubbed. Not because I was crying. No, I just want to know. And I think it's a different feeling when you know, but it's also scars your heart when you've been there before and it wasn't enough. Before I finish this off, we gotta go. Uh, with Dexter Dennis, you, you touched on it a second ago, but how big of a surprise is it not seeing him on the defensive team and how do you kind of well, I didn't see any of it. Um, I had them printed all out for me so I could show it to the team uh, yesterday when we met. And multiple guys said that. Uh, so. Two, two Coach of the Year honors for you. What, is, what does you. that mean to you? Uh, I think that it says that our habits are better. Our culture is more firm, arguably, than 
It has been since we've been here. I think it says that uh, the continuity of our staff is the continuity of our staff in this day and age becomes even more and more important. Um, it's almost like, you know, when you see all of these jobs changing and, and this week there's going to continue to be more and more changes. Everybody's looking for the next thing and I get it, but everybody's spending more money on the next thing than the one thing that they just lost which means they got to spend more money on who they're going to hire. And I think the older I get, the more valuable th those people, regardless of their title, knowing how we operate. Because the players, when you're getting more and more every year, they're hearing the same message just from a different voice. And I'm so thankful. I think our staff has been otherworldly throughout the year. But I also think the continuity of our core players and their leadership on our new players, that's another piece to all of this. Like you got to have some adults that know what's going on and you got to have some student athletes that have already been through it. And you're going to have to add new employees and you're going to have to add new players, but you need other groups that are subgroups of this is how we do it. And so uh, I'm thankful. Um, I think anytime you can get coaches to agree on anything that's rare, um, that the media would vote for me. I don't know who they are, but if it was you guys, thank you. Um, but I think it speaks to hopefully some of the consistency of what we want to do as a program. All right, we got to roll. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys.